For a lot of brands, 2023 was a tough year and the struggle to drive growth in a down market was amplified by working with performance teams that didn't prioritize the right metrics. That's why I'm so excited to introduce Ad Descartes' performance marketing partner for 2024, Farsight. Farsight is in it for the long term with a mission to do growth for good, prioritizing integrity and sustained success. By working with their clients on a PL level focusing on profitability, they've been able to continue fueling growth in an economic downturn. As the saying goes, you are the company you keep, and Farsight has worked with some of the most genuine and high growth businesses in Australia like Trademart, Black Milk, Outback Equipment, and Mocha. If you want a performance agency who actually care and are proven to deliver on their promises, make sure you check out the Farsight team at Farsight, that's Farsight with two eyes, dot com, and book a call directly with the agency's director, Ben Somerville. Welcome to The Checkout. We catch up with previous Add to Cart guests and ask them five quick questions to get to know them better and leave you with a little extra inspiration to get through your Friday. Here's your host, Bushy. Today's checkout features Dave Hack and George Brown, co-founders of Creatorflow. Creatorflow is a platform that connects brands with UGC-style ad creators. The founders saw a gap between those who have a need for social media video ad content and those who have the talent, experience, and availability to make it. They've filled their books with high-quality Australian creators and are working with some pretty impressive clients such as Shark Ninja, Who Gives a Crap, and The Udi. Dave, George, welcome to The Checkout. We've had an awesome conversation around what you're building with Creator Flow, both how you're helping brands and agencies create great content for short-form video ad content, but also how you're building a community of creators rather than just influencers who can create great content on behalf of brands. We're here to learn a little bit more about both of you guys. So I've got five quick questions. Number one, what's the weirdest thing that you've ever bought online? Dave, that smile tells me that you've got something first. (laughs) Oh, look, probably about 15 grand's worth of inflatables. What? Inflatable what? (laughs) Like, you know, bouncy castles and all sorts of weird and wonderful. Inflatable water park was pretty wild. I was like running a youth. I was still running a youth program and. And then I was like, I'm not paying 30 grand for local stuff. And when it's just already, I know the factory is probably coming from. So I found the factories. And well done. Got on Alibaba and bought huge inflatables. It was, it was a good time. I was like, if you've got kids, they're very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I don't own them, the inflatables <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Previous employment. But um, I still see them getting blown up and used around the place. So that was, that's fun. Nice work. George? Uh, I'd say probably when I was running Washbock in the early days, just buying weird and wacky ingredients like 20 kilo slabs of cocoa butter or kilos worth of essential oils. Yeah, it's pretty random having that rock up at your door, but yeah. What's the ingredient that you bought for Washbock that just didn't work? That didn't work. Good idea. I tried a few different essential oils and sort of, I guess, fragrances that just did not hit the mark. So yeah, not sure what to do with those still. (laughs) I could imagine because even... On the site as it is now, um, and I know that you're out of wash block, but some pretty out there combinations going on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like to keep it spicy. Nice. All right, number two, who is your favorite retailer? George, we'll start with you. Yeah, sure. My favorite retailer, I haven't actually bought from them yet, but I plan to one day if I have a big back garden, but it's Flow Hive. They're an Australian company. Mm. Are you familiar with them? I am. Yeah, so they basically make it possible to tap honey straight into your jar and take all the the hard part out of it. So it's an awesome Aussie invention. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be a customer one day. Fingers crossed anyway. And they're absolutely huge, right? Like you look at some of their stats for how big they are internationally. They are so much bigger internationally than they are here in Australia, which I love those stories. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm. What about you, Dave? Uh, It's probably my business shirt retailer, ctshirts.com. Okay. Uh, Or Charles Sirrett. And the reason being is like I've got really long arms <laughs> and they're like the only like around the world I've tried so many shirts and they're the only one that does like a really good length for the arms that I have. All right. Like my wingspan is bigger than my heart <laughs> and um, just the fact that they can nail it every time is unreal. And then probably the, my other one would just probably be ASOS is the other yeah. one that I'd probably spend the most on, let's be honest. 
It's a great tip for listeners with long arms. Yeah, ctshirts.com. It's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Number three, which e-commerce practice do you wish was history, Dave? Oh, the one that drives my gears the most is when you get straight to a website and there's already a pop-up saying, give me your email. Yeah. It's, you know, promising a 10% discount or whatever, but it's like, I don't even know anything about your site yet because you haven't let me see your site or your products. So, like, please just add a timer to it, people. Just be chill for a bit. At least get some intent going before you, like, stop people. I just find it really annoying. I don't know why every single e-commerce site does it. Or maybe I should know because it's probably about getting their data. So, Have you ever seen anyone use short-form video as a pop-up? Actually, that's a good question. Not off the top of my head, but I think that would probably be a great idea. Maybe we should implement <laughs> that. Maybe a little family story or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> George, what about you? Anything get you go? Yeah, I guess just the sea of sameness on e-commerce websites. They all seem to be using a very similar sort of formula and, and um, sort of yeah, template. I always love when you jump on an e-com site and there's something so unique and different about it. But yeah, seeing the same thing over and over again it gets a bit painful. Yeah, and I think it says more about just there's a bit of thought and a bit of love that's gone into it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, number four, can you recommend a book or a podcast that our listeners should immediately get into? George. Yeah, I guess um, for me, Seth Godin, This Is Marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a really great book. I loved yeah every page of it and it basically just preaches. It's not about getting lots of clicks or anything. It's about just getting a really small cohort of, of people that believe in your brand and are strong brand advocates and that's all you really need, really. So, yeah, that, that was huge for me. Yes, great book. Dave? Hacking Growth by Sean Ellis. It's kind of the Bible of growth hacking. I just reread it the other, other week as we were kind of working out, hey, how do we grow this thing? And just reminded just how many great, just helps you get in the right frame of mind about thinking about how do you actually, what kind of experiments and what kind of things can you do to move the needle and push things forward. So, yeah, growth hacking. You are the second person in the last month to recommend that book and to call it a Bible. Yeah, well, it is. <laughs> he invented it. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number five, finish this sentence. The future of retail is, Dave? Alive and online. There we go. George? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd second that, I reckon. That sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> 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 alive and online well obviously with video more alive than ever so that's a great segue into what you guys do thank you so much for joining us on the checkout great to hear more about what you're building at creative flow and to meet you both thanks, thanks so much, Nathan. Dave. thanks so much nathan <laughs> <laughs> do we need to reshoot that <laughs> To hear more from Dave and George, jump back into episode 364, where Dave and George get into all the detail of exactly what UGC is and how it differs from influencer content. They share wisdom from both sides of the equation, both how to produce great content and the must-haves when brands are briefing for UGC. We also get into their predictions on what we're going to see most for future disruption in the video content creation space. Thanks for listening and until next time, keep adding to cart.